Hi, my name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Neesden College. Welcome to Centre Point Africa with Nikki. Today, our program is centred on education, international politics, domestic politics, community development, and so on, and business as well. We also want to say congratulations to Nigerians. Today is our Independence Day. I have special guests here today, and I would like to let them introduce themselves. Hi, Dr. Boma Douglas, please introduce yourself. Hello, Nikki, thanks for having me. My name is Dr. Boma Douglas, the chairman of the Central Association of Nigerians in the United Kingdom, CANUC which is the umbrella body of all Nigerian associations in the United Kingdom. Oh, thank you. And introduce yourself as well, please. Hi, Nikki. Uh, very good to be with you here today. My name is Emmanuel Osamo. I'm the CEO and founder of Blueprint Tripmate, um, which is a smart new way to travel. Um, we provide um, the new uh, travel card, which will be launched in London um, this December, um, coupled together with a smart travel app um, to help people travel uh, better and manage their travel better. Oh, thank you very, very much. Um, I'll go back to Dr. Boma Douglas, um, the chairman of Canuc. Um, doctor, tell me about how you went into engineering profession. Thank you, Nikki. I was mathematically gifted as a child, and so naturally when the time came uh, to get into university, uh, the options were whether to go in for medicine or, or quantity surveying or engineering. And I just thought I should go straight into engineering. So I did civil engineering in Nigeria, um, did my national, uh, the uh, NYSC in Ogun State. And from then on, um, I just carried on. I worked for about eight years as project engineer in Nigeria. And then when I came into England, I went straight ahead, did my master's. Yeah. In, in environmental engineering and did a PhD. Wow. So that's how, that's my journey in, in, in <laughs> engineering, that's right. Wow. And then how, when did you become the chairman of Canuc? Right, I, I, I've nearly done four years now because um, you are expected to do... Uh, time goes along. Yeah. <laughs> you're expected to do you start. two attempts. Yeah. Uh, two years in the first instance. I did the first two years and then I was returned to do the final two years. Okay. So I'll be handing over in May next year. Oh, wow. That's right. Uh, that's fantastic. Wow. And um, tell me a lot more in regards to the way in which, if anybody wants to become the chairman, you know, what, what process do they need to do to become a chairman? I mean, everyone wants to know. So tell us the process. Right. The important thing is to engage within the community um, you're not going in there just because you want to be a chair, chairman of an organization. You're just happy to give back because it's a voluntary thing we're doing. So um, if, if you want to first of all serve yeah. and serve diligently. Of course. Before you can ever even aspire to become anything. <laughs> so you know. all the ambitious people over there, you know, remember you have to serve <laughs> and you have to volunteer first before becoming That's right. a, a Canuc chairman. That's right. You see, Canuc is structured in such a way that um, uh, it, is it is constituted of all the uh, associations, the, the lawyers, the engineers, the medical doctors. Uh, they all came together, the accountants, and so the old yeah. school associations, all under one umbrella, but it's linked to the welfare section of the Nigerian High Commission. That's one of the main process, isn't it? You Absolutely. know, um, definitely. So um, now, you know, um, you're the chairman <laughs> of Canuc and you also, um, tell us about, a bit more about your engineering profession. I know you do have other uh, big head <laughs> of, 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 uh, of an organization you're still doing. So please tell us about that, especially where to do, uh, with what to do with engineering. Right, um, you know, as uh, you know, as as uh, 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 though though before I became uh, chair of Canuc, I was yeah. also the president of the Engineering Forum of Nigerians in the in the UK, called the EFN, uh, which is constituted of all engineers, electrical, mechanical, civil, all together. You know, and we and we we kind of give back 
to the community. We're linking up Nigeria. We are related to COF, uh, Registered Engineers of Nigeria, yes. the Corin, NSC, and so on. So that's how we collaborate. And we try and mentor young engineers to become chartered. You know, that's the work, you know, we, we do. Oh, thank you very, very much, right. uh, Dr. Boma. Now we can go to CEO <laughs> Emmanuel. Tell us about you and what you're doing so far. You know, we okay. just want to know, yeah. Sure, no worries. Um, so Blueprint Tripmate uh, is, a, was, is a new way for people to travel um, throughout okay. the UK. Um, it was started because um, currently there's only two um, options for people to use okay. um, on public transport um, throughout the United Kingdom and more so in London. Um, what we found is that a lot of people that were traveling, um, and 90% of people um, that are based in London, that's 9 million people, um, 7 million of these people are using public transport every day. Okay. Um, and there's not a transparent way for them to travel. Yeah. Um, there's no way for them to manage their money better when they travel. Yeah. Um, and there's no way for them to do things like offset their carbon footprint um, and um, to be able to see the transactions that are going through either their contactless card, which a lot of people use now to travel, yeah. or through um, the uh, third party providers of who course. provide um, sort of travel cards for people to travel. So Blueprint Tripmate is sort of an evolution of the way that people are going to be traveling um, in the near future. Wow. Um, and what it does is it couples a contactless MasterCard, um, which is only used for travel, okay. um, together with a smart travel management app. Um, and what the app does is it um, just puts me or you or anybody else that's commuting in control of our spend, what we're spending, mm -hmm. um, and also offers us the opportunity to give back to the environment um, by offsetting its, um, your carbon footprint automatically as you travel. So every journey is offset for you through Blueprint TripMate. Wow. Um, so what you're saying is, just tell us about the process. Um, who can actually you know, be part of this um, app? So it's uh, been developed for everybody. Um, we found obviously that um, the, the people that are using um, public transport, either the tube or the buses, um, and they're commuting into London or within London um, on a nine to five type of jobs, or you're commuting for leisure, um, are the most people, most popular people that will be using um, Tripmate app. Trip -mate app. Mm -hmm. um, it's accessible to anybody, um, okay. and um, all it takes is actually downloading the app um, right. onto your smartphone. Um, together with the uh, biodegradable MasterCard, um, okay. and people can use it to travel wherever they are in, the, in London to start off with as we launch in December. Um, and then in um, 2021, um, we're hoping to expand where you can use the TripMate, TripMate app um, and the card anywhere in the United Kingdom. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Um, let's go back to the chairman of Kanuk. Um, you know today is the Independence Day Nigerian Independence Day, and uh, I would like also to say congratulations to all Nigerians. Yes. Tell us what you feel about today and the progress you're looking for Nigerians to be able to uh, gain um, going forward. That's right, thank you. First of all, I would like to say, you know, congratulations to, to Nigeria, for, to the Federal <laughs> Republic of Nigeria. Yes. It's it, not, it hasn't been easy. There are it challenges, not, not but we're forging easy. ahead. We're doing so well. So yes. congratulations to just, not just to the country, but to the people of yeah. Nigeria yes. as well, yes. to all of us. It's wonderful that yeah. we've come to this point. Yeah. And what we're looking forward to is, is a situation where we are all strengthened, you know, with the Nigerian good governance in Nigeria, of you know, to, to drive the, 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 the energy of development within that country. And that the professionals that we have should be projected and should be brought together to give that support to, to the development of, of Nigeria. Because somehow most things are being politicized. Of but course. we have so many professionals all around Nigeria. Yes, we do. These people should be brought in, yes. should be encouraged to support the work that's going on in Nigeria. I, I'm, I'm sure the sky is the limit. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I would like to say as well, in two weeks, we will be having a special for Nigerian independence. So um, it's going to be a great day. So um, watch out for that. So we'll be announcing that. Um, let's go back to the CEO, Emmanuel. Um, tell us about you personally mm -hmm. and what uh, what would you tell the young people that would want to go into business, um, especially, and you know, how would they go about, you know, achieving what you so, what you have achieved so far? Um, 
I mean, for me, um, it was a journey, obviously, starting university <coughs> here in, uh, in the UK. Um, okay. I graduated with a business law international business degree, okay. and I was going to go into law, um, as I was meant to mention. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was also going to go into law, but <laughs> I chose business part, well, yeah. I chose Absolutely. business studies so to go ahead. Okay, exactly. carry on. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, um, I, I think I went into the business side of things and the uh, marketing and advertising side of things. Yeah. Uh, because I had a passion in that area um, and I found myself as more of a creative individual um, and I must say I have um, family members that are lawyers <laughs> so it was hard for me to deviate from that, that, that line and go okay. into something completely different. Um, I obviously started you know, working um, in the marketing profession um, and I, you know, I had a 14 year career um, as a, a marketing executive and worked my way up. Um, to different positions, um, head of marketing, um, marketing director, and then obviously I started doing marketing consultancy for myself. Um, as I got to start doing marketing, marketing, marketing consultancy for myself, um, I moved into the business aspect of you know, okay. what, what things were yeah. um, and set up a few different, different ventures. Um, and. Um, How was it that time? Was it, was it quite intimidating? Were you able to assess everything right. quickly or did you have any struggles in, in order to get there? I mean, there's, there's, the struggles are always there. Of course, um, yeah. However, it's how you deal with those struggles um, and how you um, overcome the obstacles that come across. Um, because obviously, you know, s setting up a business is, is difficult um, and even more so difficult being successful in that business. Of course. Um, but I believe the more you try and the effort you put in, um, you will um, achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Um, and um, also, you know, it's the passion, it's um, the passion that, yeah. that, that, that will drive you to continue to do it. Um, sometimes you have to motivate yourself mm -hmm. um, rather than other people motivating you um, and being able to push yourself forward in that way. So is it the advice you give the young people that, you know, they have to be personally driven to, to gain what they want to? You know, mm -hmm. it's about them, you know, um, choosing their career pathway Absolutely. and then focusing on that and making sure that they are well driven to what they want to achieve. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Um, I believe that, um, that you know it's, it's your perseverance yes, it um, of what you want to achieve um, and ensuring that you keep on motivating yourself every day to achieve those goals that you want to achieve and um, eventually you, you know you will get to, to get there and achieve what you want to achieve. Oh thank yeah, you. You're now I go to <laughs> Dr. Boma. I just wanted to ask you again the same simple question of what advice should you give the young people, you know, looking at your career pathway, what you've achieved so far, you know, just how would you be able to, you know, you know, conquer those struggles? Yeah. Um I I'd like to just advise that when opportunities come there should yeah. be no delay. Just yeah. take them. But yeah. because I, I remember, take the opportunity. Like, I remember rightly that yeah. I was given a federal scholarship yes. for my, to, to go out to the United States for my MSc. Yeah. And within that period, I just said to myself, you, you, I had two years of grace. Yeah. And within that two years, if you didn't travel, then you, you would have lost it. Yeah. The first year, I was saying to myself, you know, back in Nigeria, I remember, you know, my mom was ill, and I thought, let me just wait for a while and try and see, you know, uh, whether she's going to improve and things. And because my relations, most of them were abroad. Yeah. What happened was, at the end of the first year, there was a, I was a coup in Nigeria, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, gosh, what's going to happen? And you know, when everything settled and there was change of money and things like yeah. that. And I, I tried to initiate the rule, and they were saying, no, those out there, we haven't even paid their fees. So mm. how can you go? That was how I lost that opportunity yeah. <laughs> to, to have traveled you know, for my master's degree at the time. So most of the struggles was after, afterwards. So I, I had to initiate my own struggles yeah. to make sure that I achieved what I wanted. Mm. So if an opportunity came your way as a youth, just take, take it off. You know that way you know you be able to achieve your aim absolutely so that's that's the thing now even uh, within the engineering forum where we mentor uh, yes. young people yes. uh, and so on the platform is there for youths to come in and 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 and, and gain mentorship yes. from the engineers who are there 
Um, I, I came in, as I've been on the board of the, of the Energy Institute here in the United Kingdom, and I'm on, still on the accreditation panel, you know, mm -hmm. where, you know, we mentor young people to become, to get interested in energy and, and so on. So the platform is there for those engineers, those young people who want to be, you know, part of the engineering system to key in. It's there the Engineering Forum of Nigerians is there here in the United Kingdom. Of course. And the opportunity is, is there for them to use. So I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm there. Anybody who wants to get in touch with me for support, mm. I'll be delighted. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Boma. It's good to see you, Emmanuel. Yeah. Um, I know you have this um, very fantastic app that yes. you're introducing. Yeah. And um, I also want to ask you, you know, what is the uh, impact of COVID yeah. in the future in regards to this particular app? And how are you able to, you know, implement it? You know, yeah. It's a very good question. Yes. And it's something that um, we come across quite often now because of uh, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, it's obvious people are not using transport as much as they used to um, yeah. because of obviously the restrictions. And it's something that has um, impacted our, ourselves um, yeah. as a business, obviously being in, in travel. Um, we've seen a third of the people it was reported um, that the footfall on public transport is mm -hmm. what is, you know, uh, post-COVID is what Transport for London has reported that people are using the um, London Underground. Um, so it's a huge reduction. Um, what we're doing and what we're putting into place with our app is allowing people to see where the, um, specific areas are congested. Um, so if you're traveling, for instance, as an example, on the Bakerloo line okay. um, and it's congested at a specific time, um, our app will be able to tell you it's congested, choose an alternative route. Wow, um, so it's live. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it will enable people to either choose to uh, use a bus um, or to use a, a different route to get to their end destination. Um, the beauty about Blueprint TripMate is what it does, it also allows people to um, walk or use cycling. Um, so they're keeping healthy and mm -hmm. they're keeping fit um, and at the same time um, they're helping the environment. So if for instance you're mapping a route into the app um, going from point A to point B, um, you can opt to add a cycle route there or a walking route and it will combine it for you to get to your destination wow. but at the same time you could be walking or you could be cycling as part of that, um, that journey. Um, which obviously would once again reduce carbon footprint and at the same time keep you healthy and fit. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for that information. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit later in regards to it as well. That's so, um, Dr. Puma, I want to ask you, you're the chairman of Canuc, um, and I know it's uh, a central of, uh, just explain to us about what Canuc stands for and how it helps the businesses, especially the Nigerian businesses in the UK, please. Thank you. Well, like I said earlier on, Canuc is the umbrella body of all Nigerian associations okay. in the United Kingdom, linked to the Nigerian High Commission. It provides a platform for people to um, relate with each other, engage with each other. But the main focal point of, of Canuc is welfare. Yeah. That we support each other. I mean, either issues we relate with each other the the uh, executive council of of canuk uh, is a group of volunteers who've come out to support the community yeah most of them are experts in their own various areas mm -hmm. but they are there as a bridge between the community and the nigerian high commission okay in such a way that if there are issues within any of the communities all they will need to do is to get in touch with their leaders who will then get in touch with the Executive Council of Canuc? Canuc will relate to the mission. So that way, the two million Nigerians or so here will not all go, you know, move into the High Commission for one problem or the other. That way, you know, we are able to solve problems in the community. We are able to make sure that if there are issues that are very important, very crucial welfare issues, the executive council will be there to support that particular individual. That is how Canuc is spread, spread uh, all throughout the, the country. And that was why when the High Commissioner arrived in the United, first arrived in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. we went round, we had a tour of the, of, of the Nigerian community in the UK. Yeah. And I was on the entourage and we were going from city to city and all that, we had town hall meetings, 
to engage with the community, to bring them, bring them close, close yeah. to the center, you know, so that they don't feel, you know, um, you know disenfranchised mm -hmm. or be detached. So there was that excitement. Everyone wanted to get involved. And that was why throughout the period of, of uh, uh, Justice Ogunteddy uh, uh, here yeah. in, the, in the UK, there is so much enthusiasm within Nigerians of wanting to associate. They would always want to pay courtesy call, and the doors are open, you know, and that can make sure that they facilitate, they try and make sure that the opportunities are there for them to see the High Commissioner and, 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 and discuss issues. Wow. So if an organization right now um, wants to be part of Canuk, what are the process? It is a straightforward um, um, uh, kind of plan. All they need to do is to fill out a form. Uh, okay. That's form. On that form, uh, you would indicate your address and all that. We just wanted to make sure you are operating. It's not a fictional group. Mm. That um, if you have about 20 people within your organization, then you're entitled to one delegate and one alternate. But if you have 40 in your group, then you have, you're entitled to two delegates and two alternates. Basically, at AGM, it is the delegates that all come together within the High Commission. That is where they make all the decisions. That's where they vote for who you know they want it. Because the term, it, it don't remain there forever. Two years afterwards, there's an, an, an election, and new officers would come in. So that's how it, it is structured. So the, the United Kingdom, for the past um, number of years, yeah. have, have enjoyed that communal kind of relationship and association, and most people have done good business. And, and the Nigerian government understands that we are here. Uh, within the past um, couple of years, a number of Nigerians have been pulled from here, you know, to serve in, in, in Nigeria. And, and very recently, um, um, a, a second vice chair of Canuk yeah. has just been appointed as a commissioner in, 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 in the pensions in Nigeria, mm -hmm. Charles, wow. Charles Sylvester. And I want to congratulate the, 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 um, uh, the head of state, you know, our president, you know, yes. um, for recognizing, for recognizing yeah. Canuk in that way. Uh, it, it's wonderful. I mean, Charles Sylvester was second vice chair of Canuk, and he's just been appointed. You know, so you know when people come out to work within uh, the community, it is not because you are aspiring to become uh, to be given a position. But first of all, sir, so, yeah. I mean, he served. He wasn't looking for any any of such things. But he, he recently, I've been, I've been given this opportunity. So. so so it's basically what you're saying is um, number one, it's easy for any organization to come and join Canuk. And, it is very and, easy and be fill part out the form, it. and within, yeah. within a week, the executive council will ensure we do um, the, the due process of, course. of finding out whether this is a, a true, truly existing organization. Yeah. And um, they will endorse it. It will be yes, 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 and that's it. And then a letter will be sent to you. and. And that's and you become a part you of become it. a part of a part of a part of Canuk. You see, individuals cannot be part of Canuk. But that, that's it is the, we it is the make, organization, make it is the associations, yeah, that become part of uh, or part of Canuk. Yes. So that's the way it is structured. Yeah. So yeah. you have to have a business. You have to have oh, a, yeah. a business. <laughs> if, if it's a business, then or, then it will be regarded as an associate. Of course. You'll be registered as an associate. Yes. But if it is like an old school association or a professional association of, of management or accountancy, engineering, you know. So we have the medical association, we have the, uh, the, the bar association, and the, the Nigerian Women Leadership Forum, you know, which is of, of, mm -hmm. of high caliber women of, you know, of the UK. Mm -hmm. They are part of, of Canuk. So that's how, how it is structured. It's very easy to be part of it. And we encourage you know people to constitute themselves in that way and get registered and be recognised. Oh wow, thank you. Before we go on a break, just tell me a little bit. Um, you know, how do anyone get to download the app? You know, where um, where is your website? Can you just tell us sure, a little bit absolutely. so we can go absolutely. on a break? 
Um, so at the moment, um, we have the um, demo app, which is available um, via our website. Um, and the website is www.ukblueprint.com. Mm -hmm. um, we are encouraging people to go online onto our site mm -hmm. um, to register um, as early adopters okay. um, of the app and obviously to download it, test it and let us know what they think about it. Okay. Um, as I said, it will be launched in de um, December, um, mm -hmm. but at this particular stage we're asking people to go to our website download the app and register as early adopters. Well, thank you very much. We've got exciting guests as we continued our information-driven, very excited flair, and we want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Now, one of our special guests, Dr. Boma, tell us about the uh, research PhD, um, please. Thank you. Um, uh, research, uh, PhD research is a painstaking journey. <laughs> so, you know, when people out there uh, give themselves uh, titles and PhDs, uh, I, I'm just having a laugh. Because basically, first of all, you need a, a clean, and I, well, I mean, I say a clean master's degree of before course. you gain to do a PhD. And you first of all have to register as um, a Master of Philosophy student. Okay. In the sense that you need to show a, a, a topic that is interesting enough for the particular department in the university that you are about getting into. Now you need a director of studies who in, the, in that department who should be interested in that, in that subject, in that topic. Now you'll be given a, a, six, a period of six months to develop that topic. And it's only after a period of six months and a, a full assessment and so on that you will now be allowed to start the project. <laughs> really? Because it's, it's a project. It's, it's, not, it's not just sitting in the classroom and listening to, to a lecturer and then sitting, you know, sitting in, you know, to, to uh, participate in an exam. You need to sort of you're contributing to science. That is what PhD is all about. So the professors, if, as a matter of fact, your director of studies is not an expert in the area. You, the individual that is studying, that is embarking on that project, is the expert in the area. Really? Because as soon as the key is given to you to go ahead, and, and the six months period, you know, I, I, I have already expired and it's been uh, agreed that you should go ahead. Then you now have an opportunity to conduct a research. Most times when you pick a subject, you think, okay, you're just uh, picking a subject within your area. But you find out that that subject, that particular topic, has something to do with medicine, it's yes. got something to do with law. It's, so you're pulling from everywhere. Wow. So all, you, you, all you're doing is to make some sense, you know, and, 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 and bring, bring out some innovation, something that hasn't been done before. Yes. That is the key. So basically, you have a period where you need letters from the universities to get in touch with organizations that are related to your project. Yes. And uh, in fact, you know, when I, I, I when I did my project, I remember that we got in touch. The University of, uh, of South Bank University got in touch with the Nigerian High Commission to say that they have a student yeah. who is embarking on a project that will be beneficial for Nigeria. And at that period, we had uh, Alaji Alaji was the um, uh, well, there was a High Commissioner mm -hmm. here at that okay. time. So he was invited to the university. Yeah because of the work I was doing. And, you know, they, they made some ceremony out of it and he was given a souvenir for even attending, for, you know, uh, for, for, you know, uh, uh, having that meeting. Of course. Now, that opened doors for me because I, you know, my project was environmental impact of greenhouse gases and I, I based it on Nigeria. Oh. So it was all about climate change. Mm -hmm. So I needed information from, uh, NNPC for Institute, Institute of Tropical Agriculture and um, uh, uh, Marine, uh, in, uh, Marine um, uh, 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 a company, there's an organization that dealt with 
all marine issues in okay. Victoria in uh, Victoria Island. So you needed letters to get into those places. Of course. Now that period I was conducting this research was when there was this is issue about environment and Sarah we were you know had problems and so on and what he died. Year, what year was it? What we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about the year <laughs> 1994 okay. 90, all that period. Okay. So um, you can imagine that to even find to be able to uh, 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 to, to even, even be able to get uh, research information was a problem because it was as if you, you're a spy or something you know um, or, you know to, so because of that it was necessary to collaborate with the high commission so that I'll be able to you know get in touch with those organizations in Nigeria yeah that could give me that information. Yeah. So instead of meteorology, the Institute of Meteorology, they were all part of it. And they gave, willingly gave this information. That was the sweet secret of my link with the Nigeria High Commission. Wow. Because they sort of supported. They gave letters, and I was able to get, you know, um, through that, that medium, I gained access yeah. to the Central Bank, to everywhere in Nigeria, all, all I needed, you know. Because you know the project was like you're assessing the uh, atmospheric ecosystem, you are the terrestrial aquatic ecosystem, so you needed information about gas production, the, 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 the uh, flared gases mm. on 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 emissions yeah. and and all that and how it affects the agri, agri ecosystem. So the main aim was to provide a mathematical model to show the effect of climate change. That was the project I did. So, so basically, it, it's all about energy efficiency. How we can uh, conduct ourselves in such a, in, in a sustainable manner in our activities. So that was the link with the uh, with the Energy Institute, and eventually, when I I, I became chartered, you know, um, uh, with the Engineering Council, I now I became a chair of the London and Home Counties branch of the Institute of Energy. Okay. And which has all the professors and the engineers and all that. At least the London and Home Counties had nearly 4,000 engineers. And I was chair for a period of three years. Wow. So I, you know, so within that medium, I was able to inform, you know, Nigerians that, look, this is there for you. And Energy Institute is not just Energy Institute for UK, it is global. Mm. And eventually I now got on, on, on the board of the, uh, of the Energy Institute, uh, what they call the Engineering Council. Yes. Um, so I was on the board of the, of the EI. And over a period of, of 10 years, I've been uh, in the peer review group of the Energy Institute where we do, we examine those who, want, who, who have an intention of becoming chartered. So we look at the skill of the candidate and the academic qualification of the candidate and all that, and we, you know, sort of make sure that what you've claimed that you've done is actually true. Because we'll all be sitting with computers, and before you know it, yeah. you know, we've been able to uh, obtain all the information. So that way we can endorse the candidate yeah. to go forward for an interview and be given the chartership. So most people who want to work within the, uh, the United Kingdom and to be able to put, a, put out a, a, a platform to say, I want to work as, 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 a, as a consultant. Yeah. You need people like me to sit there in the panel to make yeah. sure that you have that qualification. Mm -hmm. And as yeah. soon as it's endorsed, you're chartered. Yeah. So that is, you know, so I mean, what, I'm, I'm, what, I'm, what, what is the benefit <laughs> of being chartered? That's one thing people yeah. don't, you know, have the in-depth in information. Up. What is the benefits of being chartered? You, you stand, you, you are an expert within your area. Of course. And it's just like the, 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 the energy efficiency area, or in any like it's civil or mechanical, or when you're chartered, you can, you're authorized to endorse things. Okay. If there's a, if there's a, a, a form, or if there is something like a, a, you know, a drawing or something. Your stamp and your signature yeah. is authentic. That makes it go through, and and that's why most of the global, the multi uh, nationals would like to have chartered people who are chartered in their books because even when they are uh, uh, sending out um, um, uh, things for business development, yeah, 
people they want to see who you have on your books. Yes. You know. So that's the kind of flair you, you yeah. have as, as chartered engineers. Yeah. And and you basically you're also contributing to 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 uh, to science, you're contributing to new things in engineering, knowledge exchange, and you can be contacted, you know, globally. So you're not just as soon as you're chartered, yeah. you, you place yourself as a beacon, you know, to be consulted anytime when it comes to engineering matters. Well, thank you, Dr. Boma. Let's go <laughs> back to the CEO, Emmanuel. Tell me about how you, how did you get about engineering this particular idea? Um, I mean, the idea derived from uh, the lack of um, opportunity for people to choose an alternative to what's available at the moment. Yes. Um, it's very, very scarce in um, this particular field um, for what people can use um, and what people are able to pay for, pay for travel for um, when they're traveling on, uh, you know, on public transport. Um, as I mentioned, it's, there's no transparency currently at the moment. Um, and one of the pain points that uh, general commuters have um, throughout London specifically um, is that they they don't want to register with, for instance, Transport for London, who provide Oyster uh, yeah. card. Um, I'm one of them. You are? <laughs> I think no, I think the reason <laughs> being, you know, you just want to travel. Yeah. Like, you just want it to be accessible to you, you know. Correct, yeah. I don't think you really want to be completing any forms Absolutely. to do so. Absolutely. You know, you just want to just get into the train and get to your destination. And, and that's right. You know. Exactly. And also be in control of your, your travel. Oh, exactly. And um, what we found is, obvious, is um, which is quite, it's, you know, it's, it's well documented that uh, TfL are currently sitting on about £400 million pounds, um, worth of unclaimed fares um, and deposits that are stuck on people's Oyster cards. Um, so, you know, what, the, the, what, what we do is we, our card will allow you to be able to get your, if, cancel your card straight away um, if you lose your card um, rather than losing your money. You could have 100, 200 pounds on the card um, with TFL now um, and if you lose your card, you've lost your money because you're not registered. Yes. Um, so with ourselves, um, you, can get, you can just cancel the card immediately and have a new card sent out to you um, mm -hmm. and you can start traveling straight away. Oh. Um, we also help people to be able to get back in contact with TFL um, if they've had um, maximum fares put onto um, their travel. So for instance, if they don't tap out somewhere, um, as, in the, as, as, as what happens quite often in the uh, London Underground, um, you'll be charged a maximum fare. Um, and one of the problems is getting your money back um, and also not knowing that you know, you've been charged a maximum fare. Yeah. Um, so through the app, we help people to be able to get in contact with TfL to be able to reclaim their money. Mm. Um, we also um, alert people if they haven't tapped out um, okay. from specific um, journeys um, in order to try and reduce the amount of unclaimed fares that is currently sitting um, in, uh, in that 400 million worth of unclaimed wow. uh, monies from TfL. Wow. Mm. So these are the few, few, few things that we're, we're putting into place obviously to, to, to help commuters' pain points. Um, the main thing, that, one of the main things actually that we're doing at the moment is the carbon offsetting. Okay. Um, and um, as, as you know, obviously, with, the, with um, climate change and, and um, the, you know, the environment at the moment, we're trying to um, cut that down. Um, so once you use our card, um, you, your, carbon off, your carbon footprint is automatically offset. Um, so if you do a journey um, you know, five times a week, um, although the carbon footprint might be quite low because public, uh, public transport at the moment is energy efficient, obviously, um, it will help you to reduce to to um, um, offset your carbon footprint. That's right. um, so it's done automatically. Um, you as a customer don't have to worry about offsetting it. You just know that once you're using a Blueprint Tripmate card um, on a monthly basis, your carbon footprint is offset. Um, there's approximately 13. It will cost approximately 13 million um, a year um, to offset uh, your carbon. Um, the whole, the whole of London's carbon footprint, the people that do travel. Um, so it's, it's a huge amount, um, and we're, we're just trying to do something about it. Um, and you know, getting people to obviously use our card will help to reduce that carbon off, um, footprint um, that is quite huge at the moment in the UK and in London specifically. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. Can Exciting. I ask you another question? Is it, is it, you know, is it a cost to the app, or is it a cost to... Where do people 
the, the cost to the app, there just literally as a question. Oh, there is. <laughs> is there yeah. is? <laughs> okay, you it's, know, yeah. is it, you know, is it um, affordable, you know? Yeah. I mean, we, we there, there's, a, there's a cost to it, um, but for the features and the benefits that you get okay. with using this card okay. um, and the app, um, it's it's something that you know the benefits that you get it's it's worth well worth your while. Um, it's a very minimal cost, um, and um, what happens is that we we also do things like rewards. So okay. the more you offset your carbon footprint, the mm -hmm. we, we reward the customer um, by giving them things like um, discounts um, in various. Um, uh, you know, places, um, and obviously that for travel, um, aeroplane tickets, and that type of thing as well. So at the moment, we're trying to partner as much as possible with um, organisations and businesses that would like to act as rewards um, within our reward scheme. Um, so that as people are offsetting, yes. there we, yes, we're giving was, them something back. I was back. about to ask you a question. You know, how would you want organisations to be part of your app? Um, um, are you looking for private investors? Just tell us about what you're looking sure. for. Yeah, I mean, it's a, really, it's a really good question. At the moment, we're actually crowdfunding. Um, so we will okay. we'll, we'll be on the Crowdcube um, platform um, in the next four to five um, weeks' time. Um, we are at our first raise at this particular moment. Um, so um, it's, a, it's a, a hugely investable product. Um, you know, good returns on the product and very scalable. Um, we aim to, as I said, start in London um, mm -hmm. by the end of this year um, and then by 2021, end of 2021, um, be you know, the Blueprint TripMate card um, and app to be available throughout the United Kingdom. Um, we've also noticed, obviously, around the world, um, places like in New York um, and also in, um, in the Netherlands, they use a very similar system to here in the UK, um, and they have a huge transport network. So mm -hmm. our aims within the next four, to four, four or so years, four to five years, is to have the Blueprint TripMate card in um, Netherlands and in the UK um, and scale um, in different countries. Wow. So, um, <laughs> do you actually have um, a certain amount you're looking to raise, or, or just you know generally you're looking for a, a certain organisations to be able to help and invest? Mm. I mean, we if you go onto our website, there's an investors page on there okay. um, where um, investors can get more information, um, the financials, um, and see exactly you know the the amount that we are going to be raising on Crowdcube. Um, as I mentioned, obviously, it's www.ukblueprint.com. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely are looking for people as well um, that would like to partner with us um, okay. to offer rewards um, as part of our reward schemes. Um, and also organisations. Um, we all know that people have CSR policies within their organisations. Um, and it's, uh, really an, it's really a no-brainer. Um, if you have employees in your organisation um, why and that, that are travelling and using public transport, why wouldn't you want them to offset their carbon footprint as they travel? Yes. Um, especially if they're travelling for business, if they're travelling um, to you know, the, for, for work for your organisation. So what um, Blueprint TripMate is doing is we're working with um, organisations to offer the TripMate card as an employee incentive um, within the organisations. Um, so that you can get a discounted rate on the, the monthly subscription um, and your employees can use the card to travel throughout um, London um, and in, you know, obviously in the UK um, by 2021 um, and all at the same time offsetting their carbon footprint as they travel. Um, so if you're an organisation that um, is you know, uh, conscious of the environment and you want to do something about it, um, our card will do something about it because it will allow people to offset their carbon footprint as, as they travel. Okay, well, thank you for that information. Yeah, have you looked at partnering with the government as well, or are you just looking to mm. just go it alone? As a, as a, so, because uh, I'm thinking the oh. government should really, you know, be interested in Absolutely. what the benefits um, individuals are going to have with what you're launching. So, have you yeah. looked into it? Um, we, ha we have uh, people that are looking at working with public sector organisations at the moment yes. okay. um, and that's pretty much as far as we've gone We're into, go into yeah, working okay. with um, the government. Um, we know that people like Google um, and other you know, um, high um, sort of level organisations are looking at similar things that we already have in the pipeline of doing. However, by virtue of having the multi-millions and billions that they do have, um, they can get to market a lot faster than a smaller organisation like ourselves. However, we are quite agile and we're, 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 we're quick to make decisions and make things, make things happen. 
Um, so partnering with the government, um, it's, it's not in the pipelines at the moment. However, okay. we do want to be thought leaders um, and offer the government research that we, we have and that we'll be doing with our customers um, and working with them um, to create a better, better way of travelling for commuters in the UK. Oh, well, thank yeah, you. You're welcome. No problem at all. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Um, we go into uh, <laughs> Canuk mode. <laughs> the CEO, <laughs> the chairman of Canuk, you know, that represents the community. You know, he is a champion for the community. And um, Dr. Boomer Douglas, right now, you know, you're Center Point Africa with Nikki. Um, tell us about anything that you're looking in the next five years for yourself because you've graced our, okay, the community, you've been a champion and um, what would you be doing in the next five years? Yes, before, before I get into that, I just want to sneak this opportunity <laughs> to, to thank you heartily. Thank you. Nikki, Emily, Nikki. Thank you so much for the support you gave mm -hmm to the Central Association of Nigerians in the United Kingdom years ago. Yes. Wonderful, we were having this, our, spring, our spring ball and you came in at the right time and you supported us. And that went a long way to unite the community, you may not know. Wow. But because within that period, Kanuk was in tatters. There were too many issues and people were trying to destroy the organization and we were trying to bring it together. Yes. And that single event that we did, yeah. And the uh, resumption of duty by uh, the, the High Commissioner Justice uh, George Oguntadi yes. was a savior for Kanuk because wow. I'm sure we'll be looking for, for Kanuk in River Thames by now. <laughs> wow. But that, those two things <laughs> Thank you. were able to help us to bring Kanuk to form today. And we're, we're grateful, you know to you for what you did. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure to basically help at that specific time. Yeah, I would like I... to say this, you know, as a community leader, um, you want to volunteer your time and you want to help support young people develop personally and professionally. That's our main aim. We're trying to create opportunities, you know, and help in regards to making sure that most organizations that either financial stock in different ways, we're able to help them. And that's the reason why we're here. There's nothing else that we're doing but helping and supporting communities. Um, I would like to say this um, before we close, because um, the program is ending. Um, I would like to say this. Um, we have, uh, we're celebrating uh, a Nigeria anniversary, which is 60 years of Nigeria. That's right. And we are looking to plan um, eight in two weeks. So I would like to say um, organizations who are interested um, to help us plan this, please contact me on Nikki um, 074-6858-7517. It is to basically understand the scope of what we want to do with the program and how we want to implement the program. But with, before going, can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> our CEO of Blueprint to just now promote your business yep. as you're talking to organizations there to help you in regards to what you want to do yeah sure. just a little bit yeah okay i mean um so at the moment as i said we're we're going to be um in uh, um crowdfunding yeah. um on the crowd platform okay um people can invest into yes. the business from as little i believe as 10 pounds okay um as it's a mass um, it's a mass crowd crowdfunding yeah. platform okay. um we have a part of the business to give away. Yes. Um, so we, it's an equity-based um, uh, crowdfunding platform. Okay. Um, and if people want to join Blueprint Tripmate and be part of this yeah. um, and change the way people travel as well yeah. as helping the environment, it's an excellent opportunity to, to okay. do so. Um, and that can be done via the CrowdQ platform or directly at www.ukblueprint.com. Um, in terms of partnerships, always looking for more partnerships, okay. um, specifically organisations that have um, possibly chains of, of businesses um, or that feel that they have something to 
um, offer as a rewards based um, scheme okay. um, so that the people that are going to be using the blueprint trip make card will have something to be able to um, you know a, a reward um, for offsetting their carbon footprint okay. so looking for both very easily um, contactable on um, www.ukblueprint.com um, and obviously you know we'll, we'll, we'll speak to people in, in that in that way well thank you thank you so much um i would like to say as we go to the end of the program i would like to say thank you to dr Boma douglas and uh, the ceo of blueprint thank emmanuel you. Nice. thank you so much for gracing this occasion and coming to center point with nikki i would like to say um Today was informative, um, very well structured. We heard about business, community development, and everything to do with business. Um, can we say, as we carry on and progress this program, my name is Nikki, CEO of Nisling College. Welcome to Centrepoint Africa. Thank you.